Hi there and welcome Math 212 students. We are looking at Chapter 8, Section 3 today. This will be a lesson where you will be looking at a lot of pictures and I will be discussing uh, the different features or attributes of these different figures. Oops. In our textbooks, we look at things that are two-dimensional because they're on a flat surface or a page. Um, everything that we look at around us is basically three-dimensional, even a page, because a page or a sheet of paper has thickness, so it is three-dimensional. When something is just entirely flat, such as the writing on the page, where it just has width and length, that would be two-dimensional. If we look at these two figures, we see basically a box that is square all the way, the way around, kind of like a dice or a die. The other figure is a box where the sides are different uh, size shapes. You know, we've got squares on, or it could be two different size rectangles on either ends there. On the ends I'm looking here, it might not be squares, but we have some long rectangles on the faces. And it looks like the top here might be a little, not quite as uh, tall of a rectangle, but we're going to have names for all of these. We're not going to be calling them boxes or cubes. We have really fancy names for them. You can see at the top of this slide, it's called polyhedra. And you're going to be classifying your polyhedra. And um, we can look at these in terms of looking at the faces. We can see what the shape of the face is. If you'll notice in this first figure, we have a rectangle. Uh, and that rectangle goes all the way around. But the top and the bottom of this three-dimensional figure would be considered, let's see, one, two, three, it has six sides. So that would be a hexagonal uh, type figure. Here's a triangle one where each of the faces that are looking at us that are flat at us are rectangles and the top and bottom are triangles. And notice in this triangular one we have a rectangle on the bottom and all the faces are triangles. And looks like here we have a trapezoid. Um, on all the faces, but the top and bottom are rectangles. So just looking at those different attributes and what they mean, and then we'll be classifying them. We can look at whether or not uh, our polyhedra, what kind of angles there are, the number of sides that we have, whether or not all the sides are the same size, shape, are they convex, are they concave, and all those different features we're going to be looking at in terms of three dimensions as well. So a three-dimensional figure is going to be called a space figure. If that space figure has simple closed surfaces that are composed of polygonal regions, we're going to call that polyhedra, and the term solid is just going to be the union of any space figure and its interior, meaning all of it on the inside. We can look at the concave versus the convex. And the concave, meaning that it goes in. I usually look at the V and, and the concave, or a cave itself. And I know convex has one too. But in cave, it reminds me of something that goes inward. So that's how I remember that. Um, and it has the same type of definition that we looked at with the polygons where if we can draw a line segment connecting two points of the polyhedron on either surface and everything is in the interior, then it is convex. Or we can kind of do the common sense way and just say whether or not it goes in or out. The faces are these shapes that are two-dimensional that we see. The sides of each of those faces are called edges, and the vertices are these different points on each where they meet. All right, if we were to look at this cube and this ramp and decide what they have in common, what they have different, 
Another example where we're going to be looking at these different shapes, what do they have in common, what's different, what are, what are the bottom and the top faces, what is that shape, um, are they equal in size, are they right angles. When we talk about bases, we are, what we're talking about are the two parallel faces. So in this we would be looking at the face on the top and on the bottom. That's usually how we'll describe it. If we have two parallel faces, we're going to call that a prism. And the other faces that are not parallel are called lateral faces. Where the lateral face and the base meet, we're going to call that a dihedral angle. And if it forms a right angle, then we are going to say that we have a right prism. So let's look at a couple of examples of those. Here we have right prisms and we have an oblique prism because the angle where the lateral faces meet is not a 90 degree. Here we have a couple of boxes, but they're not really called boxes. They're called rectangular prisms or square prisms. These are pyramids. They don't have a top and a bottom base that are parallel. So we call these a pyramid because we have a base and then the faces all meet up at a top point called an apex. And looking at these different shapes, we're going to further describe them or further classify regular polyhedron as we have a convex polyhedron in which the faces are congruent regular polygons and the number of edges that meet at the vertex are the same. We're going to look at the picture of those in just a second so we can call them a regular polyhedron. Um, a cube would be a regular polyhedron and a triangular pyramid composed of equilateral triangles is a regular polygon and that has the special name of tetrahedron. So we're going to look at those pictures of these regular polyhedra. Here we go. We look we have several pictures and note that there are only five regular, regular meaning that each of the lengths of the sides are all the same. That's what the word regular means. And then we have our different, five different examples of this, a tetrahedron, an octahedron, cube, isohedron, and dodecahedron. The solids made from regular polyhedra are called platonic solids after Plato. Uh, there's also some uh, Leonard Euler has a special set of um, shapes named after him. And any polyhedron that has a certain number of faces, vertices, and edges, they add up, add up to a particular amount. We'll see that in just a second. We can, if we count the number of faces, edges of each of these and the vertices, we would see that the cube has six faces, eight vertices, and 12 edges, and we can note how these are listed. Then, if we were to look and add up the vertices plus the faces, we would notice that it equals E plus 2. So Euler discovered that the sum of the number of vertices and faces is always two more than the number of edges, and this is true for all, all the polyhedra. And, all right, this is just a slide that's discussing a few things about, uh, we use these shapes in order to design buildings and different uh, tools that we might use and uh, see what they would look like in a you know we're drawing them out on paper and we have to figure out what they're going to look like on a three-dimensional surface so this is something uh, engineers take a class called technical drawing in which they look at an object and they see what that object would look like from the top side meaning that if you were going to look at this object right here and look straight down from the top, all you would see were these three squares. If you look at it from the left, back, it, this is what you would see. In technical drawing, in a class called technical drawing, you learn how to look at these different shapes and draw what they looked look like totally from each of these positions. 
If you take a drawing class and you're learning perspective, you might find that you are looking at, uh, you're given a some dot paper that makes equilateral triangles. This paper is especially useful in making perspective drawings. Looking at a cross section of one of these shapes, meaning that I were to slice it and then look at it what shape would be made with each particular slice. Notice if I take a cube and I slice it just straight down the middle, I get just a rectangular uh, pyramid, uh, prism, sorry. And then if I were to look at this next figure and slice it from the side, notice that I'm going to get a prism. And same thing if I just tap off a corner. A net is something that's an awful lot of fun for students to work with and you can print these out on a piece of paper and they can look at the different shapes that compose up this net and then you are to fold along the edges. So if I were to take this, cut it out, fold it along the edges and then I would make this rectangular prism and it would be really cool. Now, whenever we're thinking of prisms and pyramids, you know, I've got this particular shape here, top and bottom, it's a circle. So you would think, well, that would be a prism, but it doesn't have our faces, such as this one does. And we would need that to be a polygon, because it wouldn't be a polygon, a circle isn't. So we're going to call these cylinders. A right cylinder is one where we have a right angle where it meets, and then we have an oblique cylinder. I've got a picture of one of those. We'll look at that in just a second. Um, here's a nice little uh, cone where you have your base. You have a circle on the bottom, and it meets up at the top. This one is still a form of a pyramid because it has I don't know how many sides that is, but it has a polygon shape on the bottom and then it has lateral faces, whereas this one doesn't have lateral faces. So we're defining that cone in that same kind of uh, method. We're going to say a cone is a simple closed surface whose base is a simple closed curve and whose lateral surface slopes up to the vertex, and we're going to call that the apex. Here's your nice little picture of a right cylinder cone and an oblique circular cone. We see right circular cones a lot. Next thing we'll look at are spheres. They're basically our balls. And they have a radius and a diameter associated with those. And that's what we'll call our balls. We won't call them balls. We will call them spheres. So pretty quick little section. It's just observing the different attributes and then trying to classify them and put them in the right classification. All right, y'all have a wonderful uh, evening. And if you have any questions, be sure and email me. Thank y'all.